everyone! So today I want to bring you some spring recommendations. I was ordered to this video by my friend Cassie. I was talking with her when I was planning out my videos for March and she's like, you need to do a spring recommendation video. So I thought I would talk about some lovely books that would be nice to read in spring. Um, so the first book I have is Jane Austen's Persuasion, which I have in this beautiful vintage edition. And I'm gonna gush about this for a second like I do every single time I pick these up. I adore these editions. These are my favorite ones. They're the perfect size, they're softback, they have French flaps, and the end papers match other books in this collection. These are my absolute favorite Jane Austen editions, more so than my Penguin Cloth Bounds, um, more so than the Penguin English Library ones. I think that these are just the perfect edition and they're really nice to read from. Those are kind of a little bit squarer than the normal paperback. Like they're they're kind of shorter um, and they just, they feel really nice in your hands. I don't know, I just love these ones. I'm sorry, I need to gush about how beautifully designed these are every single time I pick them up. So Persuasion is a tr story about second chances and kind of, you know, making mistakes when you're younger and when you've, you've grown a little bit, you're kind of like, oh, I really wish I had taken that chance. And it's just an absolutely lovely story. This is one of my favorite Austins. I say this about most Austins, but this is one of my favorite Austins. Um, and I reread it quite frequently and just, uh, it's, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, if you haven't read Persuasion, I highly recommend it. Um, it's, it's a little bit slower, I would say, than Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility. I think those are better places to start with Austin. Um, but Persuasion is an absolutely lovely story and I think it's like kind of the perfect, that second chances and, you know, second bloom of life, especially after a long hard winter like we've had here in Southern Ontario. I mean, it actually hasn't been the worst winter we've had recently, but we just, like last week, we got about, mm, 30 centimeters of snow and it's melting now and you can kind of feel the spring in the air and it's just this is the kind of book that I want to read around this time. The next book is something that's kind of light and a little bit fluffy and it's not very serious and I do quite enjoy it um, and that is Nancy Mitford's The Pursuit of Love. Now I did just mention that these books are kind of like candy. Um, they're really enjoyable in the moment but they're kind of forgettable but that's kind of sometimes a good thing. Sometimes you don't want to be involved in a story that totally changes your perspective. I mean that can be absolutely exhausting when you read books like that all the time. So if you're looking for a little bit of a palate cleanser and kind of looking to be, you know, engaged in high society, British high society, this is the book for you. It kind of pokes fun at it and it's just all around enjoyable. Next up is Elizabeth Gaskell's North and South. I absolutely love this book. Ugh. North and South. It just, it fills my heart with joy. I feel like more people should read this. Um, there's also a wonderful BBC adaptation um, that's in four parts and it stars Richard Armitage and it's absolutely fantastic and I've been kind of re-watching it slowly but surely because you know it's on Netflix. I believe it's on most Netflix so if you if you want to watch it it's absolutely fantastic. Um, this tells the story of Margaret Hale who grew up south of London in southern England and due to circumstances has to move to industrial northern England and kind of the conflict between her southern sensibilities and like the northern kind of working ethic and um, the realities of the industrial revolution on people. It definitely doesn't shy away from looking at the harsh realities of the workers in the Industrial Revolution and looks at strikes, but it is ultimately just a lovely tale, like love story. It's a love story. It's it's wonderful, but it does deal with political things. So if you're looking for something maybe a little bit more serious um, than Nancy Mitford, I would recommend North and South. If you are a big fan of Pride and Prejudice, also would highly recommend this. Um, it's just a wonderful, wonderful novel. I actually really want to reread this because it's been a year or two since I read this and it's just, uh, it's it's fantastic. Next up is a newer novel that I read and that is Balzac's Ursul Mirouet and this is part of his inheritance series. Um, he wrote four novels which deal primarily with um, inheritance and inheritance matters and the main character Urs Urs Ursul, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, um, is an orphan and she's brought up by her godparent and uncle and basically 
she is the legitimate daughter of an illegitimate son and that brings the question of her inheritance into like like her inheritance comes into question because of her father's illegitimacy if that makes sense um it's it's french inheritance laws in the 1800s so it's it's a bit convoluted but it is a lovely story um balzac is reportedly quoted to have said uh you know goodness has one face but evil has thousands um and so the main character Ursul is kind of a little bit a little bit not boring um but she's she's very good in that way and so it's but it's all the side characters and all the plotting and all the all the mechanisms going on behind with the cousins trying to get her inheritance and it's just an absolutely lovely book um i love balzac i really want to read much more of his um this was the second balzac i've read so i would recommend this for spring over um Paragoroi just because this is a little bit this has been a happier ending so you know in spring you kind of want to be happy and just read wonderful things and so the last book I have is Dodie Smith's I Capture the Castle. I have this in this beautiful little hardback edition. As always, links for all the editions that I show are going to be down below for Book Depository, um, which will ship worldwide. And this is just, uh, I absolutely love this book. I read this, I believe it was April or March, and I read it back to back with Middle March, which is sitting behind me, which is also a really good book. Um, just to just to throw in there a little, little extra recommendation middle march by george Eliot, um and it's just it's oh i love this i've reread this a couple times it's fairly simple i think it's meant for for children the the font in this is quite large um does this have oh this has pretty pretty end papers as well um but it's it's just kind of an easy engaging read a coming of age story that bill dunn's roman and it's it's just wonderful. Um, there's also an adaptation which I believe is available. I think it's on Canadian Netflix. So I don't know about other Netflix, but it has a young Henry Cavill, and that basically makes it so it's such a wonderful, lovely story. So I would definitely recommend this for your, if you're wanting something that's kind of like a coming of age kind of innocence, not quite lost, but you know, reality setting in, and it's just beautiful. Um, so those are some books that I would recommend that you guys read in the springtime. If you guys have any books that you'd like to read, like if there's, you know, I kind of, in the spring, I like to put aside the, the unreliable narrators and the terrible people, the dumb houses and the tree strickens until, you know, maybe the fall. And I like to read kind of, not simpler, but definitely cheerier books. So let me know in the comments down below what you guys like to leave in the springtime and I will see you in another video. Bye.